lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Knows, episode number nine This is today, we're going to talk about cloning yourself How to take things to the next level by cloning yourself And we're not talking about some weird freaking science experiment Imagine that Imagine two of you or two of me. Fuck that. That would be pure chaos and craziness. But we're going to talk about cloning yourself, about creating systems, processes, and SOPs. Those are standard operating procedures in your business. But really, when you think about it, you can even apply this in other areas of your life where it's going to, it's going to be quick, down, and dirty, getting down to it. So, all right. Steve Knows is a live show every week on how to have a no excuses business mindset guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving so that you can make more money with strategy and structure to operate, to dominate on the battlefield of business. This show is for business owners, executives, managers, and team leaders, as well as your teams that are, are struggling or just looking to level up in their daily development, teaching, training of you and your team where we're going to guide you to become even better leaders, communicators, problem solvers, so that they will begin to treat the business as if it's their own. Let's let's jump into it. Let's freaking roll. We're going to talk about cloning yourself so you can take your business to the next level. And I, I have a couple of sayings about this, about how do you, how important it is to not think you can do it alone. You've, you've probably heard the saying that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It's just the way it is. You need to scale or you're going to fucking fail. You need to delegate and elevate. You need to let go of certain things and grow. Let go and fucking grow. Scale or fail, delegate to elevate and let go and grow. So you need to scale. If you just stay the same, you're going to get swallowed up by the universe, by competitors, by whatever you want to call it, freaking inflation and all this other bullshit, you will get swallowed up if you're not constantly scaling things to the next level. In order to elevate, you need to delegate. You need to delegate things, take things off your plate in order to elevate to the next freaking level. Which means if you're delegating things, you have to let things go. And it, it's, it takes a big hit to your fucking ego to actually let things go. But you need to let go in order to freaking grow. That's just the way it is. And that is what delegation is, letting go. But, but listen, you you probably, if you run your business or, or if you own a business or maybe you're a manager, you're in charge of a department, whatever it is, a team leader, you probably can do things better than most people on your team. Now, there's two things that we got to hit on that. The first thing is, if you can do every task better than everyone on your team, you're probably hiring the wrong people and probably intentionally getting only people who can't do things as good as you because you are have that little bit of a, uh, an ego problem where you don't want to hire someone better than you in certain things so you think they're going to make you look stupid or make you look bad or take your position and you're going about things the wrong way. If you were building a team and you have a specialist, let's say it's in, in marketing or creating Facebook ads, let's say, they fucking better be better than you at, at creating this stuff. Otherwise, why are you paying them money to then have to come to you to learn how to do it better? You know what I'm saying? You need to be having people that do shit better than you in all different positions in the business so that you can delegate but the problem is, that's why that let go and grow part is a part that a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of managers have fucking problem with. And it has, again, to do with their ego. Afraid to let go of things. And that's what's making you not grow and getting you stuck at that level. And it, it's, it is a hit to your ego because, all right, if I'm giving up my baby and it's your, your business that you did and you're the only one doing it, you're an owner-operator, let's say. Like when I was in the gym, the owner-operator. I was doing everything, training every session, every client, every class, cleaning, doing scheduling, doing marketing, doing sale. Literally, we we're talking about every freaking thing. 
there came to a time I had to let go of some of those clients, let someone else train my precious clients that I spent years of my whole fucking life growing and building and having to let other people do that, that you start thinking, oh shit, what if they like that person better than me? What if they do it better than me? I hope they like them better than me. I hope they do it better than me. That's Why would you not want that in your business? But let's say they don't, that everyone's not going to do stuff better than you. It's just the way it is. You're going to be doing things because you're all in, you're all in, invested, you're bu- you have a, a higher level of buy-in into your business. Let's just say that y- maybe they're not going to do it as good as you. But imagine if you try to do everything yourself at 100%. You're doing 100% everything. Perfect. But now imagine you can get 10, 20, 100, 1,000 people doing just even 70 to 80% as good as you at a scale that is how you scale. So it doesn't even have to be as good as you. There should be certain positions and certain people that you are that are as good or better than you. And your goal should be to get everyone as good or better than you in every freaking spot, including leadership, including sales, including marketing, including team development. Like that's the goal. That is the goal. And once you can scale, once you can delegate and elevate and let go and grow, you can then focus on more important things like team development, like the culture of the team and the business. And that is, that's what's going to take you to the next level. So how do you do this? How do you make this happen? How do you actually delegate? Well, you need to have, just like you need to create SOPs, you need to have a system, standard operating procedures. There's one thing that, that we learn in the, in the military, in the Marine Corps, it is that Everything was documented. There were SOPs for everything. I'm talking about the, sm- the smallest, tiniest details telling us step by step how to do any single task. So any task you had to do, first of all, that cut down on the learning time. That cut down the manpower that had to teach you. Of course, you still have to do, have to do coaching and training and mentoring and role playing and practice and all this other stuff. But having an SOP, having an actual operations manual will make a huge difference. And not just some basic bullshit a corporate kind of created with just uh, vacation policies and sexual harassment policies. That's not what we're talking about. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about an operations manual literally for every single position, broken down by position, broken down by tasks, in order of priority, literally telling you every single step of the way. So first, it starts with just having awareness, having awareness, noticing what are you doing regularly in every position that that needs to get uh, uh, needs a, a process for it, needs a system for it, needs a, an SOP. So just being aware of what needs to be created is the first step. And then from there, reorganizing it, reorganizing it in order of priority, no matter how many there are. And you should be have a pretty exhaustive list of everything you need to SOP for. From that point, you're going to document. You are going to document every single step so that anyone can execute it with excellence. So if my dumb ass comes into your business, I should be able to go into your SOP and step by step, bam, done. And I should be able to do it for the most part. Of course, there's a, a barrier level of entry depending on what industry you're in or what business you're in, whatever it is. But so you need to document every single step. And, and, and in addition to that, to go with that, you should have a, a supplemental either file or folder or pictures with screenshots showing exactly. All right, if you're saying hit this button, here's a screenshot of it. In addition to pictures or screenshots, whatever makes sense for this task, for this for this SOP that you're talking about, maybe it's screenshots, maybe it's actual videos, maybe it's a screencast. A lot of my SOPs have a, a screencast where the screen is recorded. It's my video up in the corner explaining what I'm doing, saying what I'm doing while I'm going through it, nice and slow, step by step, in accordance with the written checklist. So you have a written checklist, you have photos and screenshots and video screencasts, and then even sometimes video explanation or a video demonstration. Let's say it's a technical thing. You need to show how to reset a, a some electronic circuit breaker, something physical thing, you have to show how to adjust something. You will do an actual video demonstration. Or in the gym, we'd have walk-ins. You, you, let's show a demonstration of how to deal with a, a walk-in that walks in for the first time in the middle of the day. Let's demonstrate that on video and show how it's done. And then you're going to use this stuff as training tools for your role playing, for your coaching, for your guiding, for your mentoring, for your team meetings, for your one-on-ones. This SOP is going to really be the the with the lifeblood and the flow of everything you're doing. And and also in that 
operations manual, whatever you want to call it, should have the general general sections where you're making expectations clear and understood, where you're talking about the strategic goals and the core values, the mission, the vision, the values, the goals of the, of the company, making sure everything's in alignment organization-wide. Also, maybe in there for each position, in, in addition to the operations manual, has their, their whatever number you could call it, your KPI, your key performance indicator, whatever cool little acronym you want to use for that, but basically your scoreboard. How do they know if they're doing a good fucking job? How is feedback done? So you even need an SOP on feedback, an SOP on staff meetings, an SOP on one-on-ones, an SOP on scheduling, an SOP on... So we're talking about the actual business side of stuff, the behind-the-scenes stuff that makes the machine run, but then the actual tasks that you're providing, whatever the services are, whatever you're providing. You need SOPs all across the board. So you might have one S, uh, a folder that's available, and, and Google Drive is a perfect way to do it, available to everyone on the team. That's just company-wide, things that everyone needs to know. And then each position or department or however it makes sense in your business would have its own access to its own folder, files, whatever you want to call it, which has all that stuff in there, organized, prioritized, in clear detail, showing, explaining the high standards and expectations you have for them to operate and to to execute with fucking excellence. Who is the excellence of execution? There was a wrestler, maybe Bret Hart, the excellence of execution. So once this is all done, it needs to then be communicated, communicated on how to use these SOPs, where to find them, who has access them, how to find them, how to use them, when to use them, and also used as a training tool, used in, again, your, your staff meetings, your team meetings, and all that stuff. So documenting every single set, every single task, and then you need to be optimized. You need to look at yourself just looking through it, just w- looking through it, optimizing it, where you can reorganize things, prioritize things again, uh, what needs to be eliminated, what needs to be simplified, does the order make sense, is it efficient? Then what you're going to do is test it out personally, test it yourself, step by step, run it, run it, run through Let's say that task of whatever it is on the computer, you're going to run through only what you created on that SOP, nothing else, no assumptions, no tribal knowledge, just whatever the fuck it says on that sheet, and that's it. And see, all right, you're going to test it out, you're going to put it through the ringer and uncover any gaps, any holes, and you're going to edit it. Then you're going to share it with someone else, for someone else to then do a test run, a test drive with it, where where then they will actually run through just step by step and you're going to ask for feedback and so you can edit again put it through the ringer again once that's done then you're going to actually implement it and share it out to who needs to use it let them know how to use it and then ask for feedback and edits as needed from there you do need to have a scheduled a a follow-up calendar about when you're going to revisit each sop now depending on your industry depending on the sop maybe sometimes you're going to it needs to be done quarterly. It needs to be reviewed quarterly or maybe twice a year, maybe once a year to go through it and see, all right, what's changed? What technology's changed? What ways have we done things changed? How are the, whatever, guidelines, in, uh, maybe it has something to do with the government or whatever, guidelines that you have to follow. What, what changed in your business, in the way you operate, the way you've grown and developed. So schedule those edits and changes where you're going to go through it and you're going to check it and modify it and make sure it doesn't need any, any changes. It's, it's as simple as that, but it sounds so simple. It just takes a lot of fucking time to do it. There was one task. It was about a year and a half ago. I remember doing, it took me about 20 to 25 minutes. Just once a week, I had to do it. I will say 30 minutes to do. It involved a lot of steps, a lot of copy and pasting and uploading and downloading and screenshots and videos and then copies and paste and then into emails and schedule emails for this one task. It would take about 30 minutes a week. I spent one day about an hour and a half creating an SOP just for this one 30-minute task. And you're thinking, oh, what a fucking idiot. This isn't very efficient. You're spending an hour and a half to create SOP for something that only takes 30 minutes? You you could have saved time. No, 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 no. That hour and a half that I did it, that 90 minutes, that should have only taken 30 minutes, that was the last time I ever fucking did that in my life. Because I created the SOP that I can now train and coach someone up on how to do it. And it was very detailed and had screenshots and had accompanying videos and screencasts of me actually explaining it that it could just then be delegated then i can let go of it so i can grow and do more important shit than spending time on that that's what this is all about just duplicating yourself 
through SOPs, and, and it goes a lot deeper than this. This is a full day course sometimes that we do in the LTD, Leadership and Team Development Program that we do traveling around the country to companies to help them with this stuff. But you get the basic idea of it. Create the SOPs for every single fucking task in your company. And it starts with just that. Create a list of every single thing. The awareness, create one big, long master list of everything the SOPs for, and then reorganize them. Put them in order of priority, and that's your starting point. First thing, put it on your list and start knocking out. Then set a goal. All right, I'm going to create one SOP a week or maybe it's more extensive than that. One SOP a month, whatever it is. Set a goal, set a game plan, put it on your calendar. All right, this is the hour time block this week. I'm working on creating SOPs. It will change your business. It will change your life. You will have, it, it will make you more productive. And productivity is getting more done at higher quality in less time so you have more time to do the shit you are, is actually important or that you actually need to do or want to do or should be freaking doing. So that's just a quick down and dirty here on Steve Knows on how to create an SOP and why it's so important so that you can scale or you're going to fucking fail. So you can delegate and elevate so you can let go and grow. That's what this is all about. Peak productivity cloning yourself and the first step is creating SOPs so you can delegate it. This is what's going to help you. I'm telling you, this will change your business. It'll change your life. It'll change your day. It'll change your freedom. It'll change your fucking energy and it'll make you work on the more important things you should be doing that you probably enjoy doing more. It takes time to do, but spend the time to do it and it will be a force multiplier. It'll be a massive return on the investment of time that it takes to create it. Create your SOPs, delegate them, and then coach and mentor and focus on leveling up your team, taking your team along for the ride with you. This has been Steve Does, episode number nine on cloning yourself and creating SOPs. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. We can talk about it. If you want more information on this or need a little help, want to go a little deeper dive, we could talk about deploying our LTD team out to your company, and we could talk about work on leadership, teamwork, communication, problem-solving, decision-making to make them even better than they already are. High performers that treat the business as if it's their own and prepare them for the battlefield of business. I got to get rolling. This was Steve Knows, episode number nine. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of shit come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to rise